everyone. Thanks, uh, Dr. Cosmin, to inviting me once again to this uh, dialogue uh, virtual conference, Spirituality, Society and Health. I would like to share with you my presentation about uh, an integrally transpersonal approach to health, to medicine, beyond the biomedical model produced by the Western modernity. Firstly, I want to focus on the two models, we could say, two paradigms that cross the history of the medical science, the rationalist and the holistic or spiritualist or systemic. And uh, we all know how many result the rationalistic paradigm of the mainstream science, we could say, reached thanks to the rationalistic paradigm. And there is no doubt on the side of matter, of the side of prolonging life, on the side of curing body, organic illness. But we also forgot something. While the modern medicine focus on technology and drugs, the holistic approach coming from the original traditions, not only focus on repairing, not only focus on symptoms, but uh, wants to restoring the balance by awakening the healing force of nature, since the body possesses the means to heal itself. So not only cure the symptom, but also get the self-realization. So the key words of our presentation will be the scientific method, the rational and holistic paradigm, the integral transpersonal medicine, and the traditional medicine. We could say that uh, the application of the scientific model to biological was a sort of breaking of the so-called great chain of being. We think the beginning of uh, science to make easier the work, the first scientist decided to focus on the matter through the method of misuration, repetibility, verifiability. And they decided to let apart the consciousness, the so-called difficult problem. And they got the result, we know. The result was so great that the same scientific method was applied to the bios, to the biology, and later to the nose, the psyche. But what works for matter doesn't work to bios and to nose unless you reduce the life and the psyche, the soul, the spirit to matter. In that case, of course, so the scientific methodology reduced the bio and the psycho to matter. The psyche became mind and was put on the brain and the materialistic, rationalistic, reductionistic way of researching and the work of acting succeed. Other methodology was ignored. So we could say 
that the scientific method, the biomedical model that focus on the organic and biological aspect of the body comes from a philosophical view before being a scientific method. The matter is on the base of the universe. So doing the matter was separate by the bio, the life, and by the psyche. But what if the consciousness is taken as basis of the universe? This is something that is coming from the new paradigm, but is something old as human being. To understand this, we will, we will uh, travel a little back to the history of medicine. We all know Hippocrates is taken as the father of medicine. In the fifth century before Christ, he states some basis for medicine. And disease is due to an imbalance between what he called the four humors, the medical art consists in restoring this balance by awakening the so called bis sanatis nature, means the healing force of nature. The assumption is that the body possesses the means to heal itself. So, according to Hippocrates, the course of an illness express the body attempt to spontaneously resolve the physical problem and thus to heal itself. We could uh, summarize the cornerstone of Hippocratic vision. Health is a state of balance. The importance of environmental influences like water, air, food, territory, life habits, the interdependence of soul and body, the mood, the passion, the importance of emotions, and the intrinsic healing power of nature. As we can see, the basis of holistic vision, the basis of something that put the consciousness on the center and connected with the Hippocratic vision, there is the shamanic vision. The human being is estimated to have appeared on our planet around 250 or 300 thousand years ago. And what we did all that time before Hippocrates and our times, the primordial healing system are dated on 4,000 years ago. And the tradition of shamanism, the original or the primal tradition, was spread around all around the world. And which are the cornerstone? Shamans go where the four healing force are or spirits are and bring them and put in contact with the illness. He travel into the world thanks to the state of consciousness, non-ordinary state of consciousness, goes and take the force and put in contact. He use ceremonies to do that. Ceremony to restore the harmony with the environment, with the nature and with the forces of nature, including mineral, plant, animals, and spiritual entities. And uh, which kind of therapeutic technique he used the drum, visions, 
dreams, song, dance, fasting, touching, natural elements, plants, plants of power. If we think, we will see that the basis of the modern and the most advanced of technique, psychotherapy techniques, were there. Meeting groups, circles, psychodrama, dream analysis, hypnosis, visualization, dance therapy, breathing techniques, and the progress after Hippocrates, Galen was also taken as the father of the modern medicine. Galen was a doctor from Asia, minor, and a frenetic activity. Hundreds and hundreds of publications on anatomy, pathology, therapy, diagnostic, prognostic, philosophy. He was, we could say, the father of specialization and the arrangement of medical practices according to diagnosis, prognosis and therapy, the basis of the medicine. Several hundreds of years later, Avicenna, also around 1000, he took the medicine, the methodology of Galen, and gave another contribution, systematizing in an encyclopedic way all the material, the medical material, but also theorizing the necessity of God. So again, the God comes, the consciousness comes, and the diatribe starts, because later, Paracelsus was one of the most strong supporters of the holistic vision. He was philosopher, Swiss philosopher and alchemist, and he questioned the Galen and the Vicenna theory. He was convinced of the interdependence between macro and microcosm, between the individual and the world, and that illness is a breaking of this dialogue and this balance, and health is a restoring of that balance. And there is an analogy between inner and outer world, between the great and the little, as above so below. So he started to restore, we could say, to return to the unity of the spirit of Hippocrates, but at the same time was the time of the science starting to born and the success of the reductionist method let Paracelsus theory behind. Another great was Vasello, Andrea Vasello, lot of masterpiece, including the Humani Corporis Fabrica. He illustrated with the anatomical perfection the body, and this was another great help to the analytical reductionistic method. Tens of years later, William Harvey discovered the circulation of the blood. Morgani started to codify all the proceeding of examine the, examining the patient, finding 
the symptoms, connecting the symptoms with the organs, trace, we could say, the process from the organ to the disease, thanks to the capacity to read symptoms. And then we can go ahead with the discovery of the process of inflammation, John Anker, the invention of stethoscope, René Lenek, and start speaking on virus or something that is present in the matter, creating the illness. But at the same time, we are around the 19th century, Hartmann went with the, the homeopathy, the base of the homeopathy, homeopathy is that similar cure, the similar, but the same substance that produces the illness can produce the health, taken in infinitesimal doses. And Mesmer, in the wake of Paracelsus, he supported the connection between stars and organisms. He theorized the presence of the spirit, the vital spirit, influencing the illness and the health. And he started working with a sort of hypnosis, working with the energy, the vital energy, but was fought by both medical and the classes authority. And as we see, in that time, we are around the end of 19th century. How many sciences, how many approach to the medicine are beside the reductionistic medical science? Just to see the few, Metaphysicians, idealists, physiologists, naturalistic, historian, physiatrist, theosophist, homeobiotics, homeopath, hydrotherapist, physiologist, and so Hegelian, more reasonings, phrenologist, and so and so. A lot of approaches, but the sensational discovery of the 19th and the first decade of the 20th century closed the game. The play was closed. Discovery of anesthesia, discovery of the cell, thanks to Hitchhoff, and discovery of the bacteria, thanks to Pasteur and Lister discovery of X-ray, thanks to Röntgen. Then comes antibiotics, Fleming, penicillin, the famous discovery of penicillin. From now on, the medicine get again three great revolution, the modern medicine, three great revolution. After the first one, the discovery of antibiotics and microbes and antibiotics. The second one was the revolution of diagnosis from stethoscope to functional resonance, passing through X-rays and robotics and nanotechnologies. And the third one, we are living in that moment, in our times, the genomics and the pharmacogenomics, that we can imagine a scenarios where we will know the illness before it comes, thanks to the analysis of genoma, 
and we could cure it thanks to the pharmacology built on genes to work with that specific genes. We know human being is not only physical body. Again, since several decades in our times, we know the new paradigm, the so-called systemic and holistic paradigm is speaking loud, trying to find a way, supported by the new discovery of the science, mainly the quantum physics, that new paradigm provide a new epistemological framework, new old epistemological framework, according again to a unitary and interconnected perspective, to work with the whole of the organism, means physical, energetical, emotional, mental and spiritual, together. This new paradigm is based on the priority of consciousness, the creative dynamic of the flow of consciousness, and we go a cause effect, a linear cause effect to the systemic circularity and non-locality. We go from the repression of the symptoms to develop of creative potentiality of the organism. We go from the medication to the hypercomplexity and to the self-organization. As uh, Friedrich Capra reminded us, since the 1982, there are a lot of research demonstrating that the health of human being is determined predominantly not by the medical art, but rather by their behavior, their eating habits, and the nature of their environment. Starting from this basis, the consciousness is the basis of the universe, the necessity to work with the healing forces of nature, the necessity to reestablish the balance between inner and outer world with the forces of nature, the new paradigm of the new medicine of the integral transpersonal medicine wants to teach human being to stay in touch with himself herself deal not only with the as if you are we are a machine to repair but we are living system expression of the simultaneous and mutual interdependent activity of several components, several levels, physical, energetical, emotional, mental, spiritual, social and cultural. Why it is important having a transpersonal approach to medicine? The term trans indicates three meanings going beyond means we are not only one state of consciousness. So go from monopolarity to a multipolarity way of thinking. There are a lot of state of consciousness. Going beyond mean we can go beyond the mind intended as a rational mind and get the realms of awareness the realm of intuition, the realm of the flow of consciousness. In other words, opens the world we get in contact with our true nature. The world we got in contact with the healing forces. The world where we understand human being is a complex adaptive system able to self-organize to restore the equilibrium when is lost and to evolve in a creative way transcending and including 
the past into the future, the new possibilities into the chronicized ones. The second is pervading, means that the life, the forces of life pervade everything. So there is interconnection between levels. How you can separate physical to emotional, mind to spirit, pervading any symptom, anything happens inside us, happens in all our bodies. Life force is pervading and transforming. Everything is in incessant process of transformation. The life is able to transform. Human being is able to transform itself for moving forward the harmony and the self as archetype of unity, as the totality of our organism, is able to get healed, able to transform itself and get the harmony. And if we take in account these three points, we understand that this new paradigm integral, holistic, transpersonal, doesn't negate the matter, doesn't negate the rational, doesn't negate or deny the biomedical science, but transcend and include in an approach that restores the dignity to the traditional medicine, working with the forces of nature, working with spirit, working with state of consciousness, working with a lot of tools able to lead with consciousness, able to unify the eternal dichotomy between medicine and traditional approaches, able to put together Paracelsus and Galeno. Wilber proposed the term the integral medicine and proposed to include in that integral medicine the excellence of the biomedicine able to work on the organism from the physical point of view, the excellence of the traditional medicine able to have a holistic approach to the whole, the unity of the person, and the excellence of the psychological approach that focus on relationship, on the field between us, on the field between me and you, the relationship, but not only the field. This is possible, nothing more is missing. There is a technology, there is the paradigm, there is the, story, the history, there is the capacity, the information, the knowledge. We are used to say that uh, we are seated on the shoulder of giants of the past. If we read uh, some report from World Health Organization, or in the case of this research of Italian Eurispes, the report, we can see that in Europe more than 600 million patients are using homeopathy. In more than 100 countries, the reports say that in Italian, for example, 30 million people use unconventional therapy. The most popular is the homeopathy followed by phytotherapy, osteopathy, acupuncture and chiropractic. We have a story, long history, a great heritage from the past. We could recover that integral transpersonal medicine invite to recover, transcending and including, purifying, thanks to the new paradigm, new technology, new knowledge, 
we think to the African sub-Saharan health practitioner, can think to Ayurveda, to the traditional Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, to the shamanism, of course, from, but, but still now, in Siberia, in South America, and in North America, the Aboriginal Australian traditional healers, all the folk medicine spread out in all the Europe. And we have the science supporting, there are scientific theories supporting this integration, this unitarian approach that include consciousness and spirit. Think to the complexity, the science of complexity. Just to cite a few, the general system theory, the cybernetic, the non-equilibrium thermodynamics, the automata cell theory, catastrophe theory, autopoietic system theory, theory of the dynamic system, chaos theories. All that scientific approaches are in synchrony with the unitive approach to human being. And scientific methods as the qualitative research in general, but in specific transpersonal phenomenological research, research conducted to exceptional human experiences, embodied, embodied approaches, imaginal artistic approaches, indigenous approaches, or the Tarts essential science, the Wilbur integral science, the Varela first person science, integral inquiry, organic inquiry, intuitive inquiry. Imagine if we expand the framework, including different lines of treatments from the remedies, natural remedies, to the ambient, to the food, to the meditation, to the spiritual practices, to emotional practices, to mastering the breath, mastering the visions, mastering the state of consciousness. And in that process, we could realize what we were suggest. Cleaning up means clean our personal history. Imagine how much influence our emotion, our identification, how much influence the identification, the conflict, the emotion, the not concluded situation of the past in our well-being in our health and the functioning of our organism. How is important purifying the toxification and purification of our body. And the growing up, who is sick? Who is that person? We are many inside. The personal evolution, the development of qualities, the mastery of the emotion, and again, state of consciousness and stage of thinking and waking up. We can expand our consciousness and be able to be aware, to observe ourselves, observing, to be in contact with ourselves to get the true nature beyond the dual mind. Opening up, open our, our art, be available to the partnership, to the brotherhood, sisterhood, to the service, and showing up the expression of our talents, creativity, impacting the world, communication, and yeah, 
some therapeutic measures, primary prevention through nutrition, lifestyle habits, sports, activity, contact with nature, recognition of our true nature, the mission, our mission in life, the connection with the self, the classical remedies of medicine, of course, the allopathy, traditional medicine, the biotic, natural remedies, food supplements, treating the emotional conflict, cleaning up the personal history, mastering the inner experience, the awareness, work with the energy of our body, breathing and mind-body practices, the potential development, creativity, quality, service, sharing, art, music therapy, dance therapy, meditation, awareness, self-realization. Why not? It's the time, I guess. Thanks for listening.